Final Fantasy XIV is a big game. After almost a decade of post-AAR development, it's pretty much inevitable that some stuff has slipped through the cracks of popular notice. Whether you're brand new to the game or a veteran player who clicked on this video to test their knowledge, I can practically guarantee you'll learn at least one weird thing here. There isn't going to be a very set order to the list, but we'll try to work our way down the iceberg from least obscure to most. Let's begin with overt game mechanics. We'll hit some things vets probably know, but newer players won't. Mechanic number one. When an enemy is casting and the bar is glowing red, that means you can interrupt it with abilities like a tank's interject or a ranged DPS's head graze. Very simple. Next up, along a similar vein, we have debuffs. Most vets know that if a debuff on your party frames is a white bar above it, this means it can be dispelled with a healer's Asuna or a bard's warden's pay, pain, pain, peon? Anyway, what fewer people know is that the shape of the debuff also matters. Icons that point downwards are, well, debuffs, but icons that point upwards are buffs. Closing out our first tier of tips, resurrection. We've all been there. Your cat's on the keyboard, the monitor's crooked, you have a tornado coming for your house, but it's Monday, technically Tuesday, at 3 in the morning, and you just want your weekly clear drone. In any case, you're on the floor. You know what's worse than being on the floor? Being on the floor twice, and getting the full head empty debuff. All too often, I see someone stand up only to waste my hard-earned swift cash GCD by immediately attacking the boss and dying again to an incoming raid wide. If there is incoming raid damage, do not press anything except WASD when you first stand up. After rezzing, you receive Transcendence, a buff that gives you 5 full seconds of complete invulnerability, but is lost if you take any action other than moving. This causes at least 50% of head empties that I see in Party Finder. Sacrificing 1 or 2 GCDs to avoid upcoming raid wides will result in a far gentler DPS loss than another death. Number 4. The Misery Debuff. This is an older mechanic applied by gremlins who use badmouth, making you feel so sorry for yourself that you take greater income damage. How do you get rid of it? Not Asuna, but Slash Comfort. Ever wondered how blocking and parrying work? Unlike most games, you can block or parry from every direction, though blocking, which is generally stronger, requires you to have a shield equipped. Blocking takes priority and chance over parrying, but both are bypassed entirely when an enemy crits you. You also can't block or parry dots, and if you're hard casting, say, casting Clemency on Paladin, both blocking and parrying are disabled until the slide cast window. Healer shields. These things are kind of wonky. If you want to get into the weeds, you can consult this graph from Meru in the balance discord. However, I want to focus on one particular bit. Shields do not automatically replace or renew themselves. Recasting a spell like Sage's Eucrasian Prognosis won't refresh the shield duration unless it is a stronger shield, that is, one with more HP value. This matters because if there's incoming raid damage that you need a GCD shield for, but your prior shield is about to fall off just before it happens, you can get into trouble. The control key can do some funny things in the UI. If you're a Chad map teleporter, you might sometimes find yourself buried in garbage side quests you swear you'll one day do while leveling an alt job. Don't worry, you don't have to. Pressing control will automatically bring aetherites to the front for your traveling convenience. Control can also show you the stat differences between high quality and normal quality consumables in your inventory. Bonus tip, normal quality elixirs have a longer CD than high quality ones. If you want to do some wonky camera adjustment, hold control and then either the up or down arrows and you can unlock new camera angles. Helpful for raids and any content where you want to see more than your character's back. If you ever want to do something and it doesn't work, hold control and try again. Pets have funny little dialogue boxes if you mouse over the companion pictures. They tend to be little random quotes from NPCs, but some of them are pretty funny. Mounts have them too. Go on, read your favorites. Rescuing someone before their LB cast is complete will refund the LB and preserve the party's limit bar. If someone starts a suboptimal LB in your content, give them the yank of shame. And for our grand finale, leveling cheese. The game will offer you many ways to boost your job experience. Some, like food buffs and company actions, don't have any conditions. However, others, especially bonuses that come from items, cut their perks off when your job passes a certain level. A lot of these items are very impactful and offer significant gains. It's always bittersweet to give these items items up after your last job passes a particular cutoff level. But what if I told you you didn't have to? When you are synced down below the cutoff level on these items, you will still get the full XP bonus they offer. I tested this myself on my Dragoon, who was level 81 synced into a level 65 dungeon. The first boss, with only my armory bonus and company action, gave me 115% XP. The second, while wearing Menfina's earring and Endwalker pre-order bonus, which should only give bonuses up to level 80, gave me its full effect for a total of 145% bonus XP. It actually does work. Okay, I got the full 30%. Not bad. Thought my friend might have been lying. He was not. And there we have it. If you have any other funny hidden interactions or obscure tips, let me know. If you learned anything, a like or a sub would be hugely appreciated. Big thanks to you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.